All right. Hello, everybody. First live stream. See how we're doing here. Make sure the lighting's all right and everything. You guys can hear me okay. Workhorse MTB. Hello. Glad to have you here. So, got a few things I'm going to touch on tonight. So, I'll give a few more minutes, see if anybody else pops in here. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So I'm live streaming this off my laptop. So I wanted to make sure everything was going to be good on it. It's got a fairly decent camera on it. So let's see. Basketball is always good. So as you know, I've had some, if you've been following the channel, you know, I've had some issues with my E camera. I wound up scratching the lens on it. And it kind of had me in the dumps for a while. But while I bought it, I was I was overseas. So I was like, well, you know, I'm gonna by the time I get home, I'm not gonna have the warranty on it anymore. I think it's 90 days or something. So I bought a four-year square trade warranty. It's like five dollars, I think it cost me for the warranty, maybe seven dollars. Uh, that's when the camera was a hundred bucks. So now the camera's down to fifty-seven dollars, and I'm I got a I got a spare uh Lens and the lens didn't work. Um, I'm in Asheville, North Carolina, by the way. Hey, what's that? DJ Cat 87. How you doing? So the square trade thing, I was like, I totally forgot about it. And it just dawned on me the other night after dumping $20 into a lens that didn't work. I said, you know what? So I contacted Square Trade. It was 10 o'clock at night. I finally got my, my claim put in within an hour. They contacted me, said, hey, we're processing your claim. How do you want your money? So I could have gotten a check. I could have gotten Amazon credit, or they could have found me another camera. So what did I do? Well, I got the Amazon credit, and I got another Yee Light. So I've never done a, an unboxing on Yee Light. I don't do a lot of unboxings. And I figured, you know what? I'll open it up while I got you guys here. So not a bad camera you know I mean the box is pretty nice that it comes in I will say that much so it's well packaged oh yeah there she is Miss America and what's really cool is I got that charger with three other batteries I have the battery that came with the other Yi plus the two batteries that came with the charger so I now have four batteries for one camera my only new problem now is i don't have enough memory cards so and i think that was part of my problem too is i didn't have enough or i didn't have the right memory card for the last one so it was giving me some issues um with charging so like uh, not charging but like my audio would not sync up so that was something that would rear up after long rides and all i go and download everything to my computer and i'd have like eight minutes of audio spread out over 10 minutes so I'm watching something where I'm maybe talking to a passerby and I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't even get to them yet. So it's, yeah. So you get the paperwork in here, you get a Yee sticker in your face. Uh, got the extra battery there. So I'll charge that up. Definitely planning on going out tomorrow. The weather looks like it's uh, finally, finally coming up in my favor. I went out the other day. It was nice to go out and not bring any cameras whatsoever. Um, I, I was out for like two hours. I met a dude who was on a giant glory pedaling uphill, and it's not a downhill park. Bent Creek is not downhill park. But, I mean, you could have a lot of fun on it with downhill bike because some of the terrain there, you know, black diamond terrain, real chunky. So uh, twice this week, yeah. Um, not me. Just, one, just once this week. Work's been keeping me pretty busy. Family's been keeping me pretty busy. So it's, you know. And then now my second second thing for tonight that I talked about doing was a chain guide. Now, this came with a chain guide. It came with the uh, E13 TRS race chain guide on it. It's the aluminum model, so it doesn't have the bash guard and all that with it. So on my Arkansas trip, it fell prey. And 
it's no longer on there. So I have it floating around here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it in my mess of junk. Oh, yeah. So here's what's left of my chain guide. So it's a uh, plastic piece. So I bought an off-branded one, a CK, SKY one from Amazon or something like that. And it was actually built pretty nice. It had a nice aluminum backing plate to it. Uh, I only had like three stars, but people talked about the hardware not being right for their bikes. And I'm like, I already have the hardware because I had one on the bike. So that solved half my problems. I mounted it up and the chain guide sat right above the chain. So it wasn't going to do any good. I sent it back. Amazon policies are awesome. Um, I mean, why not do business with them? No questions asked pretty much. Sent it back. So we're going to replace this tonight. If you guys want to hang out for that, because I got a new one. 50 bucks for this sucker. That off-branded one was like $21. You can't beat $21 for a chain guide, but I got a 26 tooth on the front of this bad boy, and it's hard to find chain guides for it. And I knew this one worked. So that's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it doesn't look like anymore. So that was my Arkansas trip. I had that wreck, and I don't think the wreck did it. It was after all those storms had blown through Arkansas and Tennessee and everything, there was a lot of like branches down and stuff. So I was kicking up a lot of branches. I had some get up in my drive line. So I think that's what did it in. And honestly, that would have screwed up any chain guide. So it's no knock on E13. So I got to look around more, see what else is in here. Ooh, look at this. I got a sticker because that's why you buy parts, right? For the stickers. Like you buy appliances for the boxes. So it's got the hardware in it. I still got the hardware on the bike. Now the bike's got some washers, but this has nice spacers, or at least nice looking spacers. Yeah. Some nice aluminum spacers there, if you can see them. So I'm going to try and pop this bad boy on there tonight. Have that on there for my ride tomorrow. Now I went out and I rode a, Inglesfield Gap the other day, and it's super chunky. If you if you follow Single Track Sampler, he did a trail day out there where they worked on the trail, and they armor plated the uh, the lower section of it right where it dumps out to the road, and it was great. It was just it was kind of smooth. There wasn't really any line. Now, after winter and the freeze thaw cycle, there's still no line. But it's super chunky. It's just all the rocks have been pushed up. I mean, you're just all over the place. So if you watch my wreck, you know, that was Inglesfield Gap. That was that was a part of it, you know, it was just super chunky. And then at the time it was wet and slippery. And so it just I didn't fare well. I was expecting it to be like it's been before. So let's see. Yes. And worldwide worldwide cycle rate I found actually sells on Amazon as well. I've seen some of their stuff. They have a uh, I believe they have an eBay store, too. Don't quote me on that, but I believe they have an eBay store. But I've seen I think something I, something I ordered from them on Amazon, you know, came from worldwide cycle rate. And I was like, oh, look at that. So but from everything I hear, I mean, their support's great. They seem like a great bunch of people. So I'm not against doing business with them. I just Amazon's one click away a lot of times. Prime shipping. I mean, I wanted to have this for the weekend, and I got it. With worldwide cyclery, yeah, I don't know. You know, so something maybe where I got a little more time on it might be good. But let's see if we can get into this a little bit. Look at these bad boys. Oh, these are yeah, these are these are metal. I mean, you're not really going to see that much. A little bling E13 on there. Hmm. I guess you can stack them too to get the right the right depth if you needed. So I might even you know what? I'm just going to use the spacers that are on there because I know they work and they're already sized up. Because this only this uses all three. This only uses two. So we're going to get that going. So. Anybody riding this weekend? Where are you guys going riding? Where are you from? Where are you from? You know, I haven't even started that off yet. Oh, it's my first live stream and I'm screwing up. So where's everybody from? I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, and I love it here. 
Workhorse, you're putting the kids to bed. All right. I, yeah, I don't blame you. Get rid of the kids, right? I left them in the house. I'm out in the garage working in the shop here. I'm going to start this while you're, uh, while you're getting the kids off the bed. See if I can't get this on in here where you can watch and I can check my chat. Argentina. Wow. All right. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Got people from all over. Look at that. All with the same love mountain bikes. Yeah. So I just put the screws back in there when I was done and it had these washers on there. They're actually two stacked plastic washers. So we can go right back with that. You know, the bash guard would be nice, but I mean, with such a small sprocket to begin with, I, I really couldn't see adding on that much to the price tag and for something I probably don't need. Um, I mean, I've ridden some pretty chunky stuff so far and I've not needed it. I've not been to any downhill parks or really gotten this to bottom out or anything, but from the stuff I've ridden so far, nah, don't really need it. Might be a little bit easier if I pull the chain off, but I'm going to do this the difficult way. I'm going to leave the chain on because why sometimes make things easier? Sneak this behind there. Ooh. What a tight fit. I'll be honest, you always want to start stuff by hand. So what I'm doing is I'm just twisting this. Mikey, hey, what's up? Hey, we're waiting for you. Where you been? All right. Yeah, this is going smooth. So now that Mikey's here too, um, so I, I got another Yee Action camera. What happened was I went up scratching a lens on it. So... You know, it's like you can't really use it. I got the one video I, I did with it. I thought for half the trail, I was like, it looks like there's a drop of water on it. Really, when I was coming back, you could see with the sun, I'm like, must have got some water on it. I, I never noticed. Well, on closer inspection, had a little scratch on the lens. On, honestly, it's nothing of ye. I think my grandson, when he knocked it out of the truck, it hit the driveway, and that must have scratched it. That's the only time it's ever touch the ground like that or anything and getting a new lens form is virtually impossible i hunted around i got one that was advertised for the yee 20 dollars later it didn't fit the yee so and that's when it dawned on me hey wait i, I bought a four-year extended warranty from square trade on it through amazon so i uh i sent them a message you know i did the whole site hour it was just 10 o'clock at night i did it within an hour i had hey we're processing your claim how do you want your money so, and they can send things out for repair too. you know, like if it was like a $1,500 laptop, they're going to want to send it for repair, but for a, a camera that's going for $57.99 now, it was a hundred bucks, $99 when I bought it. There are 57 bucks now, $56.99 they're going for. Um, I got $85.99 from Square Trade. So I'm like, okay. So I got that. And then while I was at it, I picked up a new chain guide because I lost this in Arizona. We're not Arizona, Arkansas. So getting ahead of myself here. But uh yeah, I didn't really lose it. It was uh part of the crash damage or whatever happened out there. So I don't think it was a crash. Uh telling everybody before you showed up that uh I'm pretty sure it was uh a lot of the debris that was on the trail. Because I mean you remember when I was out there, all the storms that had blown through and I had just gotten through a lot of that stuff like as the first person you can tell nobody been on the trail since so oh well the price you pay for fun right so got that snug down 
Got that snug down. Make sure it's not rubbing on the inside. Because I use the factory existing spacers. Boom. And there she goes. Now, E13 advertises this for a 28 tooth. This is a 26 tooth sprocket on here. That's how I got the bike. So it fits. It covers it. It doesn't sit down maybe as far as some people would like or as far as some do. Um, like a, a 28 would fit in here just fine. This still covers it and gives me a little bit of insurance. I mean, it's not going anywhere because it's still hitting three quarters of the chain in there. So it's good. I'm happy that it's on there. It's that little bit of peace of mind when I'm riding down all the chunk and everything that I'm not going to go to pedal and it not be there for me. And I go over bars because that's what happens. If you slip a pedal or anything like that, you go up into the handlebars. There's a good chance you're going over the bars. So let's see. Yes, Mikey, I am going for a ride tomorrow. At some point, it's driving me crazy. And I just went yesterday. Was it yesterday? I don't know. Wednesday. I went Wednesday. So Wednesday, I was out for two hours up at Bent Creek here in Asheville. It was great. I ran into a guy with a giant glory. That's a downhill bike. He's pedaling it uphill. Um, I didn't have much problem catching him on the uphill. Downhill, we stayed about the same. You know, I mean, it's a nice bike. Great guy. We wound up, you know, talking for a bit and all. And uh, you meet the nicest people out on mountain bikes usually. You know, I mean, there's some snobs out there, but hey, you know. Well, like that was the bike the guy had. So he could have sat home on the couch or he could have gotten out on his downhill bike and gone do some riding. So, but uh, if you're in the area and you're looking at downhill, Bailey Mountain Bike Park is now open on Wednesdays. It's $28. They're riding from three to seven. So it's $28. Gets you to lift up and down. I believe it's unlimited up and down the mountain, however many times you want to go. And, uh, that's not bad, you know, free shuttles or $28 shuttles, you know, for four hours. Um, they're starting a registration at, at uh, 2.30. So it's a great downhill park. No, I have not ridden it yet. I've been there. I helped them uh, earlier on. They had, before I deployed, they had some uh, military trucks there. So I found out through a local bike shop there having problems with them. I reached out to them and come to find out they had a bunch of people coming in and offering to work on them and you know like mechanics they're paying mechanics to come in to work on them they couldn't diagnose them they couldn't figure out the problem they're having brake issues on one of them so i went out there i wound up spending maybe about eight hours all day on there and but i got the brakes torn apart i figured out what was wrong with it i got them the right parts and they do have another guy there that does some wrench turning for them like basic maintenance and whatnot and i believe he finished it off for them and hey but now they're running uh, dually trucks. They got the flatbeds on them. You line up on them. So, and Bobo, that's one of his favorite places. So if you follow uh, Biking with Bobo, that's one of his favorite places to go. I believe he's planning on being there Saturday. So, you know, if you want to hook up with Bobo, Saturday might be the day. Um, so, yeah, so we got this done. So, oh, my God, what, what else is left? What, did I, what else did I want to do? Well, let's see. We got... 10 o'clock slope style world championship on Red Bull TV. You can't beat Red Bull TV. You know, I mean, it's free, right? So you, you, you can't beat that free. It's got all the bike stuff you want, um, but slope style world championship. I was watching a speed and style before I came out here. Let me move. I think I got a little extra glare here. Get out of the glare. Uh, is that a little better? Hope that's a little better. I think I'm out of the glare, but uh yeah, I was watching some speed and style, trying to get caught up on it. Um, yes, it's on tonight, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what time you're on because when I was in Arkansas, I had an hour difference. So I don't know where you're at all the way out where you're at in Tennessee. So it's 10 o'clock for me. It might be, I don't know, 9 o'clock for you. So, but Red Bull TV. Um, it looks like they killed the app. I don't know why they killed the app. I used to have the app on my TV and it doesn't work anymore. So I have to basically, you know, look at it on my computer, but I was watching it on my computer and anyway, I got a 17 inch screen. So it's, it's not too big of a deal. Um, yeah. So slope style world championships tonight. Um, the speed and styles on there. You can watch the replay of that. It's two hours. 
it, I love it. It's like uh, it's like dual slalom meets slope style slash BMX. I mean, it's just it's awesome, you know. And they grade the guys between like you have your finish time, so you can win on time, but then you can still you know unseat the other guy and win on points from all your style, your tricks and stuff you threw on the way down. So I mean, it's it's pretty cool, you know. I, I love um, a lot of that stuff to bring back. Uh, UCI World Cup. If you're into the downhill scene or the cross country scene, the UCI starts April 27th to 28th. I'm not sure if that's just downhill and XC or just XC. So usually they start the cross country stuff and then they trickle into downhill. But April sounds about right for for some of the first downhill races. So I'll have to keep an eye open on that. Um, Aaron Gwynn, that's that's our big American rider, right? He's on a new bike this year, new team. Um, he's actually running his own team. His sponsor for his frame is Intense now, no longer YT. So, okay, yeah, you're central time. Okay, that explains a lot. Yeah, YouTube, I got YouTube. Uh, Red Bull has their own bike channel now. Nick Breezy, hey, what's up? How you doing? Where, where are you writing in from? Where you at tonight? So, but uh, yeah, YouTube, Red Bull has their channel and then they, they spread out. They have like a bike channel now. So you got a lot more bike related clips, which is pretty good. I um, wanted to talk a little about my sponsor tonight. I picked up uh, Demon Nick. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, WNC single track. That's, yeah, brain fart. Sorry. So, yeah, you're in Asheville. So, hey, so am I. But uh, it's good to see you on this. You know, glad to see you in here. So you're going out tomorrow? I'm going to be out tomorrow. Got to go out tomorrow. It looks pretty decent, you know. And then I might even have to follow up with Sunday because Sunday looks even better. Sunday, mm, that's the weather just looks good for Sunday. I don't know about Sunday night. So a little bit of rain showers possibly, but hey. <laughs> but uh, I picked up Demon. It was kind of like an off-the-wall thing. They contacted me through Instagram and was like, hey, you know, we'd like to, you know, consider sponsoring you, whatever. And I, I don't think it's anything like, you know, they're not looking at like top athletes right now, obviously, you know, but you know, the support was nice. The discounts nice. It's a very, very good discount. So if you're looking for some protective products so far, I've been very happy with my demon stuff. Um, I got the full face helmet here. This thing is super comfortable, lightweight um, and the price. It's their $89. You can get them through the Demon website. You can get them from Amazon. Amazon's got the Demon helmets all day long, and they have them with the goggles. Um, oh, you got to work in the evening? Well, that's what the morning's for. Yeah, right? So I don't have to work this weekend. I don't have drill because I'm National Guard. So, oh, it's, it's great. I have – my schedule's open. So I got – they're super goggles. The Vipers are their standard goggles. I got the super goggles. So you could buy their helmets with or without goggles, but I needed goggles. So I got me some goggles. And these things are some sweet eye candy. I have not gone out riding with them yet, but these things are, yeah. I'm kind of excited for it. I was just going to wear some combat goggles. I got several pairs. I was like, all right, I'll just wear these goggles. They'll be fine. But the openings on these are a lot better. The foam's better. I mean, go figure. These are better than what Uncle Sam gives us, you know. But, I mean, at least they appear better. I'll find out for sure when I get out riding with them. And, you know, you start getting sweaty and hot and see how bad they fog up. So. Oh, they match your GT? Uh, well, you might have to get your pair. They have something similar in the Vipers. They have that green. I love the green. Oh, they sent me a pair of glasses too. It's got in the in the thumbnail for the live stream. I was wearing the glasses, and they kind of make everything have this greenish tint to it. It's like if you were uh, when you when you're video editing, you know, and you're like start playing with the colors. Like, oh, everything's too green. Yeah, everything's too green. But it's it's kind of cool in, in small increments, you know. So, but I. It's kind of cool. Free glasses are always nice. They're like 40 bucks on a website and they sent them to me for free. So I couldn't beat that, you know, but, uh, now I am on Instagram. 
like I mentioned, that's, that's how Demon found me. So I like posting pictures, little video clips, stuff like that. I post about maybe some upcoming videos. So if you're in Instagram, look up Missing Link MTB. It's Missing Link underscore MTB. Um, give me a follow, you know. I'll, if, I, if I recognize you, I'll follow you back. You could always shoot me, message me on there. I check all my messages and God, ever since it started blowing up, I started getting just, oh, hello, how are you? And, you know, they're half naked. I'm like, really? I don't need this, you know? So, so what's next for the bike? Oh, God. I don't know. What should I do next for the bike? I mean, like, isn't she, isn't she perfect, right? Workhorse MTB, you're fully clothed. That's good to know. You can like me on Instagram and send me messages, and I don't need half naked pictures. <laughs> but and I thought about doing some, uh, yeah, ride it. That's that's next for the bike. That's what I'm planning for tomorrow. But I was planning some gold. I thought gold would be cool to go with it. But the gold is more like that anodized gold, not like the the Santa Cruz logo gold. So it's like, I don't know. I've been wanting to change up my stem. I thought copper. So if, if any of you watch uh, GMBN, Dottie, he's got a copper stem on his bike. And I just think that color looks sick. It, it matches my front fender more than anything. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen purple. I don't think purple really goes with it. I don't think I'm really a purple kind of guy. So, yeah, I'm probably not going to do purple on a bike anytime soon. So, but, I mean, I love it. It's, it's been great. Um, yeah, Dottie is the man. Dottie's that guy knows his stuff. So, uh, Neil, I think he's getting back on the bike finally, getting around. Uh, Martin, you can't you can't beat Martin, man. His, his attitude is great for what he's been through. Um, hell, the whole GMBN crew, you know, Blake. I love watching Blake. He's got so much energy. Blake does. So I mean, that's just that's a great channel. Anytime they pop up a new video, I just have to make sure I take time to watch it. You know, it's they're informative and everything. I try and bring a lot of that to my channel. I try and be informative and helpful. Uh, some of my most popular videos are the ones, the tips. Uh, my hottest video right now is where I was dealing with my crank creak. I had the uh, my crank was creaking and it was driving me crazy. I thought it was one of my suspension pivots. So I'm out riding here, creaking, 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 and I lubed everything. I went through the whole bike with a fine tooth comb. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. And I just happened to lean against the sprocket, and I heard about that same noise. I was like, and it wound up, these, these go on with a cinch nut. The cinch nut was loose on it. So I did a whole video on that. And that's literally my hottest video right now. Um, I did the volume tokens. Uh, I got two volume tokens in and out. I mean, the other day I thought about taking one out because the uh, angles field gap is so chunky. I was thinking of maybe softening the bike up and then I looked down and my compressions cranked up on the fork. So yeah, I wonder why it was running rough, but Hey, the guy that was there on a the downhill bike, he had his rear, his rear shock locked out. So I let him drop in first. Cause like downhill bike, this guy's going to dust me. And I let him get a little ahead of me, and then he stopped, and he was like, oh, I forgot my rear shock's locked out. So stuff happens. I usually forget to put my dropper down, which is when I crashed into that tree. That's kind of what was going on. I didn't, I, there's a pedally section before that, and then you get into a jump, and you drop in where it's all armor-plated and rocked and everything, and, yeah, it, it didn't go well. You can definitely ride a bike so much better with your seat post down or a dropper on it. So like my granddaughter, I still got a, I put a quick release seat post clamp on hers. I haven't spent the money on the dropper post yet for her. So let's see. Yes, Mikey, and we definitely appreciate your support. Definitely. Um, so I added you to my Facebook page for Missing Link MTB. So I, I post up on there, little things every now and then. I'm not too active in it just yet as the channel picks up more. And that page picks up more subscribers to it. You know, I'll add more. Feel free, feel free if you have any bike-related content to post it up there. Um, you know, anything. Little memes, whatever. I love memes. My meme game, man. You know. So, let's see. 
Yeah, it's riding the trail locked out. It's like, what 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 are you thinking? You know, like why do you, and you you're thinking in your head the whole time, wow, the trail's really chunky today. What's going on? And you get done, you're like, oh, I could have enjoyed this so much more. But yeah, and uh, my old my old GT, oh, I love my old GT. I took that out maybe a week ago, just down to Carrier Park. I just just log miles, just log miles. I got the semi slicks on it. Um, who is it? Oh, one of my subscribers. He made a comment on the tires. Yeah, they're they're Kenda semi slicks. They're like a bottom of the dollar semi slick. Oh, they're garbage. So they're all right for just rolling straight. But you'd think when you hit some sand or some dirt, whatever, you'd still have some traction because there is a little bit of nubs. And, yeah. No, I might as well be riding bald tires or, you know, straight on the tubes. I mean, it was just, yeah. But, hey, got out on the old bike. You know, she's doing great, logging the miles. I'll probably get a set of uh, Continental Mountain Kings. I originally had a set of Continental Mountain Kings for it. And I was looking at my granddaughter's bike. We got her. And I was like, oh, she's got semi-slicks. So she's got my Mountain Kings, and I got her semi-slicks. So. Oh man. Yeah, I mean this is the race face with the cinch on it. Now, Park Tools does make like a two-part kind of like an epoxy or something and they use that on those. So if you take that cinch nut off and you find that your your sprocket has a little extra play in there, it could be that the crank's getting worn, <coughs> could be the sprocket's getting worn in there. But you put this two-part product in there, and uh, it hardens up and takes up those gaps. So maybe that'll help you eliminate some of the creaking. Um, for me, I use blue Loctite. I just I got the gel. I have a uh, let's see here, Permatex. It's a medium strength gel. So you basically, it's got a crank on the bottom here. You crank it up. It comes out. And it's it's a gel. And I gooped it all in there, put the sprocket down on it. Done. Yes, Mikey, duct tape. And if duct tape doesn't work, maybe you can run some bailing wire in there. <laughs> bailing wire works. If you can't, you know, if you can't duck it, you know what they say. But, uh, yeah, the blue Loctite worked well for me. I mean, I didn't have any issues with the fitment of it. But there's enough of an issue with that product that Park Tool came out with a, with a chemical product to help fix that issue. So you might want to look into that. Exactly. Workhorse. Yeah. Turn up the radio. That's what I do with my truck. My truck's a, uh, a 97. Just sometimes you got to turn that radio up a little bit. I got the Sirius in there and yep. 41, 41 turbo. Yeah. Turn that up. That, that does great for all the squeaks and rattles. So it's not, not a bad truck. It's not a bad truck. At all. I love that truck. So let's see. Yeah, blue Loctite. I mean, the liquid would probably be all right, too, but I like the gel because it sits in there, and you can cinch it down, and I just imagine in my head that it takes up more space, and, you know, I don't have any issues with it. Plus, with the Loctite on it, it's not going to come off. When I took it apart, it had grease on it, and who knows how well it was tightened. There's a torque spec. It's got the torque spec printed on it, but, I mean, you can just use your uh, German spec, you know, guten tight knock it out done um that's all i usually do that's why i ride aluminum bikes and nothing carbon fiber on it um i got the chain guide and i was reading the paperwork and i was like uh is it carbon i mentioned carbon fiber and i'm like this isn't carbon fiber is it i'm like then i gotta worry about torque specs it's polycarbonate i'm like crank away but you still have to worry about torque specs with that i mean this is what i installed it with this is a snap-on ratcheting screwdriver they always have the straight handles. This is one I bought years ago off the Snap-on truck. They came out with a curved handle. You can get extra torque on it, and it's held up great. Got no problems with it. So, hell, you can't beat it. But, uh, yes, music solves all the problems. A lot more problems than just noises, you know? That's that's the beauty of it. But, uh yeah, so you got to, if you're going to try and catch the uh, Slope Style World Championship on Red Bull TV, you got uh, oh, about 25 minutes, 
I'm going to try and catch it. So I'm, I'm going to make sure this stream's over by then. I appreciate you all coming out and watching. It's great. Uh, feedback on my videos. If the lighting's not right and it's really distracting, if there's something going on in the background, it's really distracting. Let me know. I'm trying to make everything better. I'm trying to make it so you, the viewer, enjoy it. You know, watching it, you watch longer. I mean, like, okay, you watch my video for two minutes, but I let you down if I don't, you know, I mean, you took the time to click and start watching and you got two minutes in and you're like, eh, next. So I want to, want to do better. want to do better for you guys and put out some good content. I'm probably going to wind up filming my ride tomorrow because eh, why not? I got a new camera, you know, I got to try the camera out. So when I'm all done here and I'm, I'm watching the slope style, I'm going to wind up putting my uh, little fuzzy cats on there, little dead cats. Basically, I'm going to make this again. So I wound up uh, – got away there since the first time I found you and talked to you more. Thank you, Mikey. Really appreciate that. Um, let's see. YT Capra, CF, 2016, white DVO diamond. Ooh, that's nice. SRAM X01. Oh, man. Yeah, that would – you know what? I think that Capra's got a press fit bottom bracket. I'm pretty sure YT uses that exclusively. So it could be your bottom bracket cups where they're pressed in. Um, you, I don't know if you have the tools for it or the ability to take it apart. Being that it's the carbon fiber one, you – you might want to go to a bike shop and have them look at it. Um, take the cups out, grease them, and reinstall them. Like I'm not the greatest bike mechanic in the world. I'm a I'm an automobile mechanic, and I've been working on bikes since back in the day when I used to race BMX. So I mean, you know, if something breaks, something happens. You got to get that fixed between motos. And you don't have a mechanic. You're the mechanic. So I do the same thing to my bikes. I'd like to credit a lot of my mountain bike experience with getting gears and all that stuff set up now to Seth's bike hacks. That's really, that's who got me started in, in doing more work myself. I used to just sub out all my gears and stuff. I was like, ah, I need to derail cable, take it to the shop. So, but with his videos and my time in Kuwait, now in Kuwait, you can get bicycles, the MWR, which is military welfare recreation. They have a, bike rental program for soldiers and it's a free rental. You take it back every 30 days and every 90 days you leave it overnight for them to service it. Or you can buy your own bike there. I had my own bike and I rode it all over post and I put an ad out where I helped other people. I said, Hey, if you got bike issues, you know, bring them to me. I'm not going to charge you. I just want to help kind of give back. And you know, it was more practice for me. I got to rebuild the whole rim I had, a, I had a bunch of spare parts I had accumulated, some people, you know, donating spare parts from bikes that were trashed or some bikes that came across that were trashed. <coughs> and uh, so somebody had a smashed rear rim, but I had an extra front rim. So I just swapped it out and, hey, it worked, you know. I mean, some of that stuff gets pretty beat up over there. The sun's brutal. You don't bring the bikes indoors. They sit in bike racks outside all the time, subjected to 120-degree weather, the sun sandstorms the mud storms now the mud storms are fun because you get a sandstorm comes in and then rain comes in on top of it so it just rains mud and it's just nasty everything's nasty you're nasty it, it's gross so but hey you know but you know i got to cut my teeth and, and do a lot more work out there ordered a lot of tools out there from amazon i didn't get like park tool you know i got boomers and whatever because i was I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to bring them home. There was talk like you can't, they're going to stop you at customs and you're not going to be able to bring tools home. So, but I brought them home. I, I you know, I got them home. Some I mailed, some I brought home with me in my bags and they still work great. You know, I've used all of them still now that I've been home because you'd be surprised. Like the, uh, the crank uses uh, a rear cassette tool. I think it was a rear cassette tool or bottom bracket tool, one of the two. But I mean, hey, you know, and for the few dollars you spend for it, for the little bit that you do with your own bike maintenance, it only gets into when you need the park tools, that professional quality tool, when you're doing it more and more and more. Although if you got the money to spend, park tools, a great tool. And it's nice to have a nice tool when you're doing the work. It, it makes it go easier. You feel better about yourself. It doesn't, it's not as sketchy and everything just works better. You know, this is 
this is coming from somebody who's shopped Harbor Freight and the snap on trucks in his day to day job. You know, like sometimes I can get away with some Harbor Freight stuff. They do make some halfway decent stuff. They're Pittsburgh Pro Tools. If you're looking to start off like a tool collection, some basic stuff, maybe some Allen wrenches. Look at the Pittsburgh Pro line from Harbor Freight. It's got a lifetime warranty made in Taiwan. It's the China stuff you kind of want to steer clear from. They just they don't have the, the qualities not there. Taiwan, on the other hand, it's that's pretty decent quality. Taiwan's pretty good. Um, your blue point right off your snap-on truck, that's imported stuff. So, you know, that, a lot of that comes from Taiwan. So, hey, let's see what we got going on here. Yeah. Damn press fits. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, hell, maybe some blue lock title will work on that too. I don't know. You know? Um, yeah, bottom bracket set. I think you can get the uh, I got the honestly I got the chain whip and the and the cassette tool for like 10 bucks. Um, I did a review on them. It's Umers, O-U-M-E-R-S. I got a video on it. I did it back when I was in Kuwait still. So it's a little sketchy. You know, it's a it's a Hero 5 session, you know, and me in the desert doing a, a video. Um, but the tools are pretty decent, you know. I mean, for what you pay for them, they're definitely a good tool. Um, I've not bought anything off of Wish. I mean, I, that stuff's always popping up on my feed. Uh, let's see if I can find that bottom bracket tool real quick. It should be right here. Got my box of goodies. Yep. That's that there. Well, I got that's on my ratchet. It doesn't come with the ratchet. I'll tell you that much. Um, that's my chain saw, not the chain tool. There's the Umer's chain whip. I've used that. I've used all these tools and they work great. Uh, I've used a few on my Nomad. Now, the, the Umer's, if you look at that, it's got a little tweak to it. I had a little trouble getting that that loose but it loosened up i mean it just tweaked it a little bit kind of had a bad angle on it when i did it so part my fault that it bent part the tool's fault that it's not an expensive tool you know it's not park tool park tool i want to say they have lifetime warranty but i could be wrong correct me if you know any better um but yeah i mean it's I mean, hey, Mikey, if you live closer, man, I'd be like, bring the bikes over. I got the stand, and we'll go through them. I don't, I don't mind taking the time. I got uh, one of my buddies is going. He's deploying. He's going to drop his bike off with me. I'm going to go through it, do the whole, you know, service, grease everything, and have at it, you know, while he's gone, and just stick it in the corner. Probably like one, one of my other buddies that we we work with. Um, he might wind up riding it. Who knows? Um, you know, it's another buddy I, I rode with overseas and he wants to get a bike now that he's home, but he's kind of, you know, got to get the bill squared away, stuff like that. Priorities first. He's looking to move out this way. He got a job out here with us at the shop. So, you know, can't beat that. Uh, now something I wanted to talk about, I'm, I'm kicking it around, starting it Patreon. So I don't have a whole lot of followers. Last I checked, it was 127. Right. Um, Patreon helps pay the bills, stuff like that. I got some stickers. You know, I can send stickers out, um, different things. I have Patreon set up. So Patreon's making some changes. They're setting up different tiers. So like you can have one where there's no tiers. You can have another package where there's tiers, another package, a pro package, but it all costs more money. So I'm going to be grandfathered in. So like, It'll it basically it'll cost me less money of anything that you would, you know, like if you if you go with a dollar for a month, okay, I keep more of that dollar than they do. Uh, with the newer plans, they keep more of the dollar than they did before. So, but they offer more tools and stuff. They're going to make merch available. But honestly, I don't really need merch through Patreon when you can get merch through teespring teespring has pretty much everything and you know and i honestly like to get to the point and bobo kind of gave me the idea where uh his artwork was done 
by No Breaks Nate. So it was originally like, you know, fan artwork. Oh, cool. You know, a fan designed that. That's his sticker. That's his, that's on his shirt. And so I was like, you know what? Quarterly, I could do a shirt. I can have fans send me in shirts. We could maybe vote on it or I'll just pick one and be like, hey, this is going to be the shirt for the month. Put the shirts into production and mail them out to all you guys. Um, I can't do that for a dollar a month, obviously. So I have tiers set up. But the big thing about Patreon, if you want to go on there, um, I've been putting content up there. It's going to be early release content. So if I come out with a new video, boom, it's going to be on there. And then a few hours later or a day later, it'll be on YouTube. I've seen where people are like, oh, yeah, exclusive, you know, first dibs on it. I'm like, okay, first dibs. And by the time I get the Patreon notice, I'm also getting the YouTube notice. I'm like, is that like five minutes? Like I couldn't even finish the video by the time – it popped up on YouTube. So not a big fan of that. So, I mean, Hey, I'm cool with a day early. You know, if it's going to be a Sunday video on YouTube, you guys would have it on Saturday. I can do exclusive live streams through, uh, through Patreon. So that would work too. We can have a Patreon live stream, Patreon rides. I mean, this is down the road as things get bigger and better, small channel right now. I'm trying to build it, working with you guys, Appreciate all your feedback and everything you guys do um, with any feedback. It's, it's, it's been truly helpful. And again, hopefully the videos are getting better and you notice it. I uh, was going back through some of my old stuff and horrified and I'm wanting to take it down. I'm like, Oh God, this is so bad. I need to just delete this one, but I'm, I'm leaving it up there. I mean, they're, they're still getting views. They're still out there helping people, you know, on some of the stuff. So can't complain really. You know, just getting the job done. But uh they were closing in. We've been at this for almost 47 minutes now. Wow. It's not bad. Not bad. Keep going. You might be the next Seth. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm not really I'm not looking to do this full time. I'll I'll, I'll say that much. I'm looking to hopefully make enough at this to support the mountain biking, to put back into more video content. So like if I was to go on a trip, oh, I'll bring the bike because maybe the channel paid for the trip. So like Dirt Rag Fest up in West Virginia, I would love to go to that one year. So maybe one year I can have enough through the channel, go to Dirt Rag Fest, film the whole thing, whatever, put out some videos, put out some live stream content from there and just get you, the viewers all involved. You know, stuff like that. And I've, I've talked it over with the wife. She's definitely cool with that, you know, going on trips and whatnot. And it might not be big trips. Like, so I did Arkansas. Arkansas was through the military. I had a class I had to go to out there. So I did my homework. I said, you know what? There's trails off post. Uh, I went out there totally looking to ride Burns Park. That was it. I was going to ride Burns Park. And then I'm at the gym working out. And the guy behind the counter is like, hey, you know, we have trails here on post. I'm like, Looked it up. Um, I don't know why I didn't look. Who would think that a military post would have mountain bike trails? Not me, obviously. Maybe you would. But, uh, yeah, huge trail system there out by the airport. It goes all the way out. They got several black diamonds. I tried to get out to the black diamond named Ball of Nails, and that's when my bike broke, and I had nothing but problems. So, But because Meriden came along, had a zip tie. I pulled my rear caliper off because the caliper got dinged in and was rubbing against the rotor. So I had the caliper rubbing the rotor and I had the bolt that holds the caliper down was ting, 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 ting on the little fingers of the rotor as it was going around. I, I didn't know what it was. And I flipped the bike upside down. I'm looking at it, looking, at, finally figured it out. So, I mean, I had to pull the caliper off because couldn't, couldn't ride like that with the, with the brake dragon and plus putting that wear on the rotor and the caliper and all. But, uh, yeah. And I'm okay. So you would ask about what's next for the bike. There's something I've been, I have been kicking around now on here. I have the HT, the composite pedals. Um, from what I've read, they make nuke proof pedals and all that. So it's basically a nuke proof pedal because nuke proof is made by HT. So they make nice pedals. Those have been doing really good. They're getting some rock hits and whatnot. Um, what I don't like is that this pin, the center pin on the rear, is plastic. It, 
the way it's reinforced on the pedal, there's no choice. It has to be because there's no way to get a bolt in through there unless you use the grub screws that went down through top, but you can't do that on a composite pedal anyway. So I'm looking at pedaling innovations. Their pedals, instead of being so wide, are so wide. And the idea behind that is instead of riding on the ball of your foot, you're basically stomping your whole foot down so you get more power. Uh, there's plenty of reviews out there. Um, uh, regular Guy Mountain Biking did a review on it. A um, couple other popular ones. Can't totally escape me right now. I'm going to shoot myself for it. But anyway, everybody loves them. I've not seen one bad thing on those pedals. Um, aside from their $99 for the pedals. So that's a little limiting factor right now with getting stuff is having the money to get the stuff. So I'm considering getting those. I'll just get them in black because why not? So I'll let you know. I'll definitely do a video review on them, how I like them. Cause I've found that I'm not riding so much on the ball of my foot anymore. And that really got me thinking. I'm like, I'm watching the reviews on this. I'm like, you know what? I'm not really riding up on the balls of my feet anymore. Because I used to ride clipped in on my older bike. And, you know, that was, I was fine, well, and good. It was efficient. But I've gone to flats. I can move around better. I can get back on the pedal faster. So it's nothing's worse to me than when you can't get back on the pedal. So maybe you slip a pedal. Maybe you dead sail or a jump or something. You come down and you, you use your foot and you stab it in the ground. Get your balance back. Well, now you want to get your foot back on the pedal because there's another jump coming or there's some rocks. And what are you doing? Now I got my right foot's all the way down. I can't get my other foot back on the pedal. And I had a rock strike or now I'm careening off a jump. So sometimes it gets sketchy, especially the way I ride because you have like, don't ride above your skill level. I kind of ride here. So happens but they're a bigger platform plenty of pins on them so the only thing i'm not so sure about is they use grub screws and the grub screws are a little fatter um i had originally the crank brothers 5010s on here they use the grub screws the grub screws where an allen wrench can go down inside so these are like a regular bolt they screw in from the bottom so you have a smaller pin a much smaller pin. like this pin would almost fit inside the grub screw. So the shoes I run, I don't have five tens. I don't have fancy shoes. I got some SB Nikes, you know, they're a skate shoe. They're not really the best shoe. Even, you know, they don't have a waffle pattern on the bottom. So they grip okay. And they seem to grip better with this style pedal. So I might stick with these a little bit longer until I upgrade my shoe wear. So but yeah, it is what it is. You know, money doesn't grow on trees, at least not for me. Try to make smart purchases, smart decisions on things. And I try and pass that information along to you guys, you know, with some tips and stuff like that. Try to do things on a budget because, I mean, not all of us just have, you know, money we can just throw at this sport. You know, I have a, a Yi action camera. I don't know if I get the angle right without the light glare. But yeah, Yi action camera. It's $57 on Amazon, you know, and it does 1080p, 60 frames a second. You've seen the footage. It's what I wear on my chest rig up until I just recently switched my chest rig over to the session. Now, the session will come back off of that $20 mount. I'm going to basically toss it to the side. It's going to come back off of that and go back up on my helmet or I have some plans to mount it on my bike, give you some cool, you know, POV on the bike, like, rear chain got you know rear chain see how it's going over to cassette when i'm changing gears or the front fork i did it on the front fork once before i didn't have it mounted well the mount cracked and ding 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 went the gopro so yeah I, I never really got to use that footage but damn mikey i hear you tight budget guy so but it is what it is you know we have bikes we can get out there we can ride we can enjoy ourselves and Really, that's what it's about. So, I, I didn't get a gravel bike like I want. I didn't get a fat bike like I want. They're still on the list. I have some uh, some other military travel coming up this year. Um, Going to be spending later this year, later this summer, we'll say. I'll be out in California for 
hell, almost all the summer. So for a few weeks there, I'm going to be at a school. I might not be too reachable at the school. I'll probably be tied up with that. Um, it, it's ALC. I have to go to that. It's an NCO school for you know sergeants, for those of you who aren't familiar with military lingo. Um, so I'll be out there for that. That's like four or five weeks. I'll probably, I'll try and have some videos lined up and set to publish to kind of keep you guys going. And I'll be able to get on my phone, you, most likely, and, and check chat and stuff like that and see what's going on and what's cooking. And then uh, I will be back out by Fort Irwin, some other places. So I'm looking for weekends off, some days off. And I'll get a rental car, I'll get a rental bike, and I'm going to hit some trails out in California. I'm bringing my GoPro, my Yi, I'm, I'm bringing my cameras with me, right? So if I can get on a bike, you'll be there to watch because I'm going to film it. And the Yi, I'm going to play with a little more because it does live streaming, supposedly. So, I mean, if I can get a cell phone signal, I don't see why I can't live stream a little bit of a ride or something. Just, hey get you guys along for the ride. You know, I can put it on my helmet. That'd probably be the best. Hey guys, what's up? And then hit the trail, you know, uh, Richmond Hill park. I've done some videos from there. It's nothing too crazy there, but hey, I could bring you out, you know, do a little 10 minutes and whatever. Like I've been going on nine years now. I don't know. It all kind of just muddles together and I don't even remember kids birthdays. So it's like, but it's going on, should be nine years. So it's not bad. I enjoy it sometimes. <laughs> Every, you know, everything's got their moments, you know. It's like a job, you know. You're like, oh, I love my job. Then you go to work and then you're complaining because you're there. It's, you know, it's got its ups, its downs. It's like really crappy camping, you know. But, uh, yeah, so I'll be out tomorrow. I'll get some ride footage. We'll see what I can what I can turn out. I don't know if I'm going to play so much with the Yi tomorrow on my chest rig. So my footage tomorrow from my chest rig will probably be from my GoPro session. Uh, the Yi might go up on my helmet. It might just stay in the truck. I don't know. But I'm going to try and do some more third person. I think third person would really add to my videos. I got a tripod. I didn't get a Joby. I got the Chinese Joby. I think Joby is made in China anyway. So I got the more Chinese Joby. It was $8 off of Amazon. Looks just like it. I've already used it, messing around, some shots and all. I've had it wrapped up in the tree. Um, and it works great. You know, it holds the camera. It wraps around, holds itself tight. So that's pretty much what I wanted, you know, so I could mount it up. Because I'm worried, too, if I, if I have to lay a tripod on the trail, you get other people down the trail. I'm not the only one who uses the trails. So by the time I get up and come back down, I could have had a whole group of people go down. And by the time I get down there, the camera could be upside down off in the woods or riding down in somebody's pack. So if I can strap it up to a tree on a branch, I can get a possibly an even better angle. And it's out of the way. I don't have to worry about running it over. Like uh, I did a little third person in Arkansas. And I came really close. On, I did that downhill a couple times it was a nice little drop right into a turn and you know you get gopro effect with it actually was a little cooler to ride than it kind of looked but and i came right close to the camera the one time almost clipped it so <clears throat> but yeah hopefully your trails dry tomorrow maybe with all this wind dried it out a bit but i mean hey you know and, and progression too you know start off the little stuff work your way up like uh I got some stuff I built in the yard now or the yard. It's the woods out back. So I'm hoping to get some videos from that up soon. That should be pretty cool. I got uh, some down trees. Well, I use logs and some deadfall to basically build the ramps up and down the backside. I need to build the backside up for my granddaughter because she's not going to be clearing this stuff just yet. So she can ride it. Whereas I can hit it with some speed, jump it, land right off. Um, so it's a cool little play area. It's I don't have much for acreage or anything like that, but it's trying to make do with what I can, what I got, have a little area. So if I do the volume tokens on the bike, I want to tweak them. I can go out. I can try the settings. I can try new parts of my bike. If the bike is, if 
I said, my gears are bothering me on the trail, but I put it on the stand and I'm like, everything's working fine on the stand. I can go and I can exercise it in the, in my property here and see how everything's working. I can try out my tires, check out tire pressures. Um, that, that goes a little, because it is really loamy soil. So it's going to react a little differently to what I'm used to out of like Bent Creek and all. Um, because you don't have loamy soil out here. It's more like hard packed clay and rock. Um, but, you know, grips, lever position, stuff like that. The thing, the little things you want to sort out before you hit the trails, I can hit it here. You know, plus I got a big enough driveway. I can go out there, screw around. So if I can't get out on the trail, and that's another thing. Can you do a track stand? You have to ask yourself, can you do a track stand? If you can't do a track stand, what are you doing with your downtime? You're sitting there, you're watching TV. Get outside, go sit on the bike. I mean, that's what you did as a kid, right? What's wrong with that, right? Because you're a kid? Nah. Get out there, practice your track stands and, you know, some endos and whatnot. You know, it all helps that the fine motor skills, your bike control. So, yeah, I used to be able to hold a track stand for a light no matter how long the light was. Now I'm kind of, you know, but I spent some time off the bike. I used to do a lot of road cycling with my mountain bike. I used to ride to work and back every time I could. Um, it was about a 45-minute ride to work. But that was back up in New Jersey when I wasn't so scared about traffic. And now it's, I don't know, living down here in Asheville, you get some of the blind turns. I'm just worried somebody's going to come around a blind turn. And, I mean, I was walking through a neighborhood one time, and I had somebody hit my hand. I was walking against the flow of traffic on the left side of the road like you're supposed to. Somebody came from behind me, cutting the turn so close, they hit my hand with their mirror. So, I think they kill like 125 cyclists a year on the roads in Asheville. But I mean, I've come across some of them on the road and they're idiots. They ride like idiots. They're riding two abreast around turns and everything. I've come around turns doing 40 miles an hour and I'm staring at a cyclist in the middle of my lane and there's cars in the other lane. There's nowhere for me to go, but over the guy, right? Well, keep up on your brakes, people keep up on your brakes. So that's, that's the only thing that freaks me out from riding on the road is just getting run over. I had a guy, uh, you know, railroad tracks, you want to take them at a 90 degree angle, you know, perpendicular. But there's a set of tracks that are diagonal to the road. I've ridden over them a hundred times, never had a problem with them. I had one roadie right in front of me as if I wasn't even there, driving my F-150, swerved out right in front of me to come in like that. I mean, took the whole lane in front of me and came in, and I had to swerve into the oncoming lane to miss him if it if there was a car coming the other way, I would have ran him over. I mean, there's there was no way for me to stop in time because you're doing 45 miles an hour down this road. And for somebody to just suddenly swerve in front of you like that, I mean, it's this is why, you know, maybe that number is so high. Not so much because motorists driving distracted, although that's a huge problem, that distracted driving. I ride a motorcycle. You see it all the time. People – on cell phone, not watching where they're going or anything. So, you know, it is what it is, but I'm going to start calling this a night. I got half a beer left. I've been talking and not drinking. So I don't know. This is a pinner from Oscar blues. Everybody likes to brag about the beers you're drinking. Um, I don't like IPA. I'll put that out there right now. I don't like IPA. This is a throwback IPA. I didn't know what that was. I thought I'd give it a whirl and I've been hooked on them ever since. If you like grapefruit, because it's got citrusy kind of tones to it, it's it's like a grapefruit. It's a really light beer, like an IPA tends to be hoppy and all. But with the citrus in there, it's just a real refreshing kind of flavor. And they go down so easy. But I am watching watching my diet, I'm trying to keep my gross figure down. I busted out a beer only for the live stream, just to celebrate my first live stream. So I've been seeing a nutritionist at the VA get my stuff in line because the diet I was trying wasn't working. So she's got me on a different route and we'll see, you know, maybe her plan is better than my plan. So, so far it's working really good though. I'm, I'm down on weight, which means better cycling performance. I'm not hauling as much weight up the hills. I'm not beating up my bike as much on the downhills. So, and I didn't notice it this last trip when I was out for two hours because I'm eating at such a caloric deficit. I wound up having to use one of my goo packets. So, and they're approved, you know, they're 23 grams of carbs and trying to keep it 30 grams and below per meal. So 
the group packets help. They make such a huge difference. It was maybe five, 10 minutes after taking that, drinking water, and boom, I was like fresh all over again. So, and I used to use those when I raced cross country. I used to race cross country mountain biking, and I've raced with and without the goo packets. And let me tell you, you need that extra boost. You need something there. You can't do it well without goo packets or some sort of energy boost, whether it's little honey packets you get from Panera Bread, you know, with your tea or something or, or whatever. You need some sort of stay energy. You got to top off your glycogen stores in your body. Bring, bring some gummy bears with you. If you like gummy bears, gummy bears work. Bring the Haribo ones. Um, they're made with uh, glucose syrup instead of high fructose corn syrup. So, you know, it's the, the glucose syrup tops off your uh, glycogen stores in your body. So that's that's more beneficial to you than high fructose corn syrup, which your body doesn't really have any use for anyway. So you might get that sugar rush still, but it's not. So Haribo is the way to go. Uh, make sure the ones with the uh, glucose syrup. So, but hey. Thanks for coming, everybody. I'm going to call this one a wrap. I'm going to say it's a success. You know, I got some good feedback from everybody. I got more than one person came out for it. You know, I really appreciate that. Uh, look to do some of these in the future as my subscribership grows. So will the, so will my live streams, of course. Um, maybe we get to the one point where I can monetize and monetization is great. I can, I'll have ads but the ads will help me to be able to put out more content to, you know, just support the channel. You know, um, if you haven't followed Seth's bike hacks, check it out. He's actually taking his Patreon proceeds and putting it towards a mountain bike park in Asheville. So he was going to purchase property. Now he's working with Sorba, which is a Southern off-road bicycle association to work on basically community land whether it's state owned or whatever to be able to use that and then he can take that full price that he had set which i think was about thirty five thousand dollars he estimated one year of patreon and put that towards the jump park section and everything and then volunteers will work on the trails and i'm set he opens that up has volunteer days i'm gonna be out there working on those trails because you got to give back man you, you go out there you ride the trails you're putting wear and tear on those trails. You're using them. And it's free. It's free to go out and use those public trails. When you have a trail day, you know, it's a few hours. Go out there. You know, you meet some great people and you'll start building the trails and learn a little more about trail maintenance and what goes into it, too. I mean, think about it. You build your own trail at your house. It's oh, that's a lot of work goes into that. And then imagine somebody comes along and screws it up and just, you know, you get a little more respect for it. So. But, hey, I'm going to get off here. Thanks for coming out. I know I've said I'm going to get off before. Uh, thanks for coming out. Have a great night, all. Hope you get out riding this weekend. Uh, I know it looks like a good weekend for me. And, Mikey, yep, I'll get on there, and hopefully I'll get some videos up this weekend. Hopefully you get some videos up this weekend for me to watch. Maybe another horror movie. I need some, I need some B-horror movies. Something I can find. I don't know. Find something on that. I got Amazon Prime. I got Netflix. I got Hulu. Let me know. Let me know where I can find these things. I'm having trouble finding some of them. I don't want to download torrents if I don't have to, you know. Uh, but, hey, thanks for coming out. Have a good night, everybody. And I'll catch you later.